if one set is a subset of the other set, if A is a subset of B, if you know I'm writing the fact if A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, then A equals B. Very intuitive, very important. So you know, one guy is contained in the other guy, right? Every element of one guy is contained in the other guy. We also know the other guy is contained in this guy. The only way for this to be possible is if they are both equal. The only way for them to be possible if both sets are equal. So, that's extreme essentiality. So how you do proofs with this? How do you prove to this? Okay. To prove that A subset, A, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A equals B. Very simple. You take an arbitrary A, take an arbitrary element in A, and show and show it is in B. Okay. So if I take an arbitrary A, element in A, or capital A, because it was randomly set, because it had, because I just, because it was generalized, I just said any element in A. So I, I took a fixed element in A. And then I proved A was a B. This implies A is a subset of B. I took one guy in A. I didn't pick out a name for it, but I said, let it, some, this guy be any guy in A. Then it'll have to be in B. Therefore, all elements in A have to be in B. Likewise, if you take an arbitrary element, in B, and show it is an A, then this implies B is a subset of A. And this will then imply, by extensionality, A equals B. So when you do proof like the Morgan's Law for homework, or some of the um, Operation on sets. I actually want you to read the examples of how to prove them. Uh, just, so just take an arbitrary of elements. So, okay. Here's another thing I want to teach you guys. It's about unions and intersections. So I said, so I talked about arbitrary elements, right? So say, for example, A is in A union B. So this means A is in A, or A is in B. It's a possibility that it's only in A and not in B at all. But being in A union B means it has to be in one of these sets. They have one of two possibilities. Likewise, A in A intersection B means A is in A. And A is in B. Okay. And lastly, A in A minus B means A is in A and not in B. Okay, so that's some set operations. And I really want you guys to focus on making sure that you do the set, proofs out sets correctly, taking arbitrary elements in, in the set. I, I just thought of the group theory, I, I, I read a group theory classes, set theory class. Everyone makes the same mistake the first time. So please, please don't do it. Take a, take a general arbitrary one in the set and show it has this property. But that's good. Okay. Email me other questions. So now we're going to take it. So that's how we maximize sets. That's we put these laws. We put some axioms. 
And so sets have to abide by these laws to be full of set. Or they have to be generalized by these laws. So now, because, because I don't want to be purely logician, but purely analysis, I like taking the middle ground. So now let's talk about the analysis question. What do analysis people like? You know what they like? They like pancakes. No, they like, um, they like the candor set, actually. And that's one of the things I like talking about. That's why I pay my honors to do. Uh, so what can we talk about now? They like to know that things are comfortable. So remember, we talk, did a lecture on bijection. So if there's a bijection, a bijection, I know people say countable at most countable. I'm going to do the street definition of bijection and say countable, not at most countable. If that, so countable would be a bijection from the natural numbers. From the natural numbers, some people will say, how about the set one, two, three? Is that okay? From natural numbers to Set S, then we say S is countable. So I'm going to get claimed. If you're going to ask me, hey, Matt Ninja, how about set 1, 2, 3? Is 1, 2, 3 countable? So in some texts, they use the word countable and say, if it's finite or bijection for natural numbers, the book that we're currently using says this is called at most countable, meaning that it's a finite set. Or at most countable, and this is means countable. Or at most countable means either a finite set or countable. Let's use, let's use the book notation. Always good to follow book notation if that's what you're doing wrong. So, so an example of something that's countable is the even numbers. Are countable. Why? Very simple. f of x equals 2x. The odd numbers are countable. Why? f of x equals 2x plus 1. And lastly, okay, and lastly, I'm aware of there's more things that are countable as well. Let's say one, two, three. Okay, these are two examples. Because there's a bijection from the, 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 the natural numbers. So rationals are countable. There you go. Rational is countable. I think I said that in an earlier video. I'm going to check. But um, we're going to go more into countabilities later. But there's an old argument, a very classic argument. And if you guys are map people watching this, you can see the argument right now. But uh, I will give you a different diagonalization process argument today. I'd rather teach you something really cool that still can't make sense than that, that rational argument. I will. It's good to see only one classic argument today. So, so, so you remember it. So let's go into this argument. So the question is, so I'm going to have to prove, so the question is, are the real numbers countable? And the answer, no. So I'm going to prove a similar, so you probably got to ask why, right? So I'm going to prove a similar example of, similar example, the set of all infinite binary streams binary streams So, for example, are, are uncountable. So, so a binary stream is just a bunch of zeros and ones. It's just some long, probably infinitely sized, uh, if it's if a stream that's worth like all time, of zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 and keep on going. One, 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 